This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Hi, welcome everyone to the Koilel Agar de Pirka here in Kugarn Hills, New York. And we're going to speak about the subject that is on everyone's mind. Maybe you've lost some sleep over it. And that is, um, in this week's parsha, Moshe tells the people, Al Tiro, his Yatsavu, or Uas Yeshua Hashem, Asher Yasa Lachem Hayoim. Ki Asher Yisem Es Mitzrayim Hayoim. You see Egypt today, you will never see them again. And this is not only a statement of fact, but this is even a, um, a love. Meaning, Moshe is not just saying you will never see them again, but he's saying you cannot see them again. You're not allowed to see them again. So we begin the shir with something from uh, somewhat of uh, a sefer that not everyone is uh, familiar with. The name of the sefer is Kaftor Vaferach. The Kaftar of Ferch was written by a Rishon, Rav Ashturi Haparchi, who is a Talmud of the Rush. Thank my friend uh, Gedalia Schwartz for get, getting me the Sefer a uh, number of years ago, about four years ago. Rav Ashturi Haparchi was Nifter approximately in the year Kuf Tesvav, 1355. And as we mentioned, he was a student of the Rush. And he's listing sort of Lavin that people overlook. And it's possible that these are lavin that uh, are violated on a daily basis. And one of these lavin, he says, V'chein hadar b'yaretz Mitzrayim. Likewise, those who live in Egypt. So I told you, this is a subject on uh, you know, all your minds. Especially people that are thinking about where to go for Pesach. And uh, maybe they want to go uh, Pesach in Egypt programs, you know. So, V'chein hadar b'yaretz Mitzrayim sh'oiver shloy shalavin. If you live in, in Egypt, you're over three lavin. Vishamati b'Mitzrayim, and I myself, when I was in Egypt, I heard in Egypt mipi Rab Shmuel echem nei banim shel Harambam zal. I heard from one of uh, Maimonides' grandchildren, shiksha Rambam hayachoyseim shemay biigeres shlucha. When the Rambam would sign his name, we know there are various signatures. You know, um, some gedolim had very artistic and flowery signatures. Some gedolim had would write a message. At the end of their signature of Shanshan Fal Hirsch would sign off, Veho MS, Veha Shalom Ehavu. And how would the Rambam send, uh, sign off? He would write, Hakoisev, he would say, Moshe ben Maimon, Haoiver Bechol Yom, Shloisha Lavin Ploini. The Rambam who violates daily, Moshe ben Maimon who violates daily three Lavin in the Torah. It's an amazing thing that the Rambam would sign his name. Moshe Ben Maimon, who every day of his life was violating three lavin, and says the Rav Ashturi Haparchi, I told the Rambam's grandson, um, I told him, you know, to try to be menachem him, you know, a shtikel. Shema harav zal hayamuchroch lamoid sham. Maybe Chveis, the Rambam had to be there, Sharei hayaroyfei lamach matzam, he was the doctor of the king. Like we say, there's certain heterim for those who work for the government. They're allowed to have a certain type of hairstyle because uh, in order for them to continue in their, in their capacity. So, so too, perhaps the Rambam had no choice because he was the doctor of the king. But again, the Rav Shura Parach is saying this is a chatsi nechama. This is not a real rationalization, not a good reason. But I try to make him feel a little bit better. But the bottom line is we have the report of Rav Ashturi Haparchi that the Rambam signed his name Moshe ben Maimon, who violates daily three lavin in the Torah. Marv Rabbi said, what are the three lavin? We have one Pesach in this week's parasha, B'Shalach, Ki Asher Yisem Es Mitzrayim Hayoyim, Lo Yisai Sifu L'Royisem Oed Ad Oilam. We have a Pesach in parasha, Shoiftim, Ra'ak Lo Yarbe Lo Yisusim, V'Lo Yashiv Es Ha'amitzrayim Ha'aleman Harboi Sus. Do not bring the people back to Egypt to increase horses. So I know, you know, you may have a nice horse collection and you've been waiting for the day to, uh, to increase your horse collection and you figure, you know, I might as well go down to Egypt to get a few more horses. The Torah says, don't go to Mitzrayim to increase your horses. God said, don't you dare return again to Egypt. Pasha Shoftim. Then, Again, Hashem says, you're going to return to Egypt on boats, on the road that I told you not to go on. Very interesting, all three times the Torah tells us not to go down to Mitzrayim. The trap in the Pasuk is, Zarka Sega. By the way, there's a Sefer 
on the meaning of all the Munach Zarka, Munach Segels, and the Tanakh. From one of the Rebbe's. My father had, I think maybe from one of the old Belzer Rebbe's. He has a Sefer on the meaning of the Munach Zarka, Munach Segels, and Tanakh. Okay, it's interesting. All three times the Torah says, um, na, um, all three times the Torah says not to return to Egypt, we have a Zarka Segel. Be it as it may, the Rambam apparently, and you know, Rebbe Ashturi Aparchi was a Rishain, he was a credible Rishain, of course. And uh, it's an amazing testimony that this is the... Now again, he didn't see it. He's not saying first-hand testimony. He's saying what the grandson of the Rambam told him. The Rambam himself, in the Sefer HaMitzvah, in the 46th Mitzvah in the Torah, the Rambam says, HaMitzvah HaMem Vav, He, Shehezi Ranu, Mishkain Be'eretz Mitzrayim, were warned not to reside in Egypt, La'ilam, why? So that we don't learn their heresy. And we don't walk in their ways. And this is what it says in Shoftim. It's actually a Shiloh why the Ramam quote this Pasuk and not an earlier Pasuk in Mishalach. Fine. This warning is thrice repeated three times. And the Mechilta says in three places Hashem warned us not to return to Mitzrayim. One is in Shaiftim, one is in Kisavai, and one is in Bishalach. Now, even though the one in Bishalach is really a narrative, it's not a love. Hamarisha tells the people, stand by, because as you see Mitzrayim today, you will never see them again. And it doesn't, you wouldn't have thought it was a lav, you would have thought it's just in the course of the story. We have a tradition that it's more than a story, it is um, a lav in the Torah. And this fits very well in with the report that the Ramam signed his name, the one who violates the three laven daily. Furthermore, the Ramam and the Yad, in Hilchas Malachim, Parakei Halacha Zayin and Ches, the Rambam delineates where are you allowed to live. He says, you can live anywhere. You can live in Brooklyn, you can live in Williamsburg, you can live in Muncie, you can live in uh, what? Hungary. You could, live in the, you could even live in the five towns. The Rambam doesn't say you're not allowed to live in the five towns. And everywhere, the whole, the whole world is available, except for Meyeretz Mitzrayim. Interesting, the only place in the world you're now to live is the place where these words were written from. Right? Iraq and Jordan. Is Iraq, you could live. Iraq, by the way, there are a lot of Makoimas Hakadoshim in Iraq. First of all, the Kever of Icheska Hanavi is in Iraq. Ben Eshchai used to visit there. The Kever of Ezra is in Iraq. Is in, um, where's, where's Ezra? Iran? I don't remember. Esther Amalka is in uh, Persia. Iraq. Um, Daniel is in Persia. But Iraq, at least, I think you have Ezra and you have Icheska. You know, might want to start a tour there. But the only place in the world you're now to live is Mitzrayim. Is Mitzrayim. By the way, there are Mekoyim HaSakadoshim in Mitzrayim. Well, there's, a, there's a kever of the... Um, actually, it used to be a place where it was considered a big school to visit. The grandfather of the Baba Sali, the Abir Yaakov, is buried in Egypt. And uh, people would go there and, and actually it became a political issue whether, you know... But a bit as me. Ubishloisha Mekoimais is here at Tarshal Lashal Matsam. There are three places where the Torah warns not to return to Egypt. Laisai Sifun Lashov, Pasha Shaiftim, Lai Sai Sif Oid, Pasha's Kisavai, Lai Sai Sifal Raisam, Pasha's Bashalach. Alexandria included, says the Rambam. <coughs> but says the Rambam, you're allowed to return to Egypt to do business. You're allowed to return there. It's only Asr to stay there. And then the Rambam says a very beautiful Chiddush. If you live there, even though it's a lav, we won't whip you. Say, so what do you mean? Lachar, it's a lav sheyish by Maisa. So the Rambam says like this. No. He says, you're allowed to enter Egypt. There's no Isra to walk into the land. The Isra is to live there. So when I do the Maisa of walking in, there's no Isra. And when I decide to stay, it's a lav sheyish by Maisa. It's an interesting... Uh, but it's clear, right? In other words, I'm allowed to go there, and once I stay there, it's a lav shame by myself. And the obvious problem is, there are many Yidin, and there are many Tzaddik, and many Gedoyle Yisrael, throughout the ages, who did live in Egypt, and the question is, how are they allowed to, um, in light of the fact that there seems to be three places in the Torah where it says you're not allowed to go to Egypt. Um, we have a list here from a, an incredible Sefer, Oitzar Pla'is HaTorah, 
you ever saw it, it's a, really it's an amazing sefer. And he has a list here of all the G'daylim who lived in Egypt, or many of them. We have <coughs> Rabbi Avram ben Arambam. We have Rabbi Sadia Goin. Rabbi Tzalel Ashkenazi. Rabbi Tzalel Ashkenazi was, the, uh, was a contemporary in a chavrusa of the Ari, the Shittim Kabetzes, right? The Ari Zal. Rizal was an Orthodox rabbi. He lived in uh, Egypt. The Radvaz was the rabbi of Cairo for 40 years. Rabbi David ben Zimra, he wrote more than 2,500 tshuvas. The Maram al Shakar. The Balginas Verodim, the Marikash, who lived from 1650 to 1712, Rav David Konfarto, the author of the Koryadoros, Rav Lazar Ashkenazi, the Mas Hashem, and many, many Gedolim, including uh, Maran Rav Avadi Yosef, lived in Egypt. And this is something we want to investigate. How were they allowed to live the in Ram- Egypt? Is the Rambam was Nifter in Egypt? I believe no. so. I believe so. Uh, was uh, found him uh, Heter, that he didn't go forever there. He just I think he passed away there, but and somehow miraculously his body was brought to Tveria. Legend has it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't spoil my share. Okay. Well, that's going to be a. We're going to get to that. We're going to. We're going to today. Be'ezras Hashem Yisbarach, offer ten heterim to go live in Egypt. If you feel the real estate here in Kew Garden Hills is getting a little out of hand, there's much cheaper real estate available in Egypt. And we're going to learn today 10 reasons of how you could live in Egypt today. Okay, let's begin with number one, Rabbeinu Bechai. And primarily the Rambam himself, who signed that uh, he used, violates three lavin. So uh, how do we deal with this? So answer number one is the obvious answer. It's an Avera, you're not allowed to live there. The Rambam writes, he lives there, and he's violating three Lavin in the Torah. That's the first answer. The answer is, you're not allowed to. The Rambam had no choice. He ran away, you know. He ran out of uh, Fez, out of Morocco. He, the first stop was Egypt. And uh, probably he would have got out there as soon as he could. But in the meantime, he's violating three Lavin. And uh, are you allowed to live there? You're not allowed to live there. I people live there. I'm sure they did other good things in their life and they try not to violate other Averos, but uh, not living in Mitzrayim is not one of the Averos that they were able to avoid violating. I mean, that's what the Ramam says. The Ramam Paskins, if you live in Egypt, you violate three Lavin. The Ramam signed his name that he violates three Lavin a day. Obviously, this answer does not sit well with us. I mean, to say that the Ramam really violated three Lavin a day, so uh, you have to give up all your money not to violate a Lav. Why would he do that? Why would he advertise that? So obviously we're looking for something more. So let's start with Rabbeinu Bechayi. Rabbeinu Bechayi says a chiddush in Parsha Shaftim. Zu mitzvah l'sha. This is only a temporary mitzvah. An interesting concept. Not all the mitzvahs in the Torah are l'doyrois. This is a mitzvah l'sha. Kedei shelo yilmedu Yisrael ma'aseyem. So that the Jews don't learn from the bad ways of the Egyptians. Since the Egyptians were notorious for every abomination. Like it says, So Hashem said, get out of there. But it's not a mitzvah of that you're never allowed to live in Mitzrayim. We see many congregations live there from time immemorial until today. And if there was a mitzvah of Doirois, Klal Yisrael Kedoshim would never be lenient. And if they would be lenient, I guarantee you all the G'doylam would have spoke up. The, the leaders of Klal Yisrael are always um, watchful to make sure that Yidin are, are practicing in the right way. If it was taka wrong, that the G'doylam would have been moicha. Therefore, Rabbi Machai Yishita, this is a temporary love. Now this will not answer for the Rambam. Number one, the Rambam listed as one of the Lavin in the Torah, and it's well known. One of the Sharashim of the Rambam is that a Lav could only be a Lav if it's Ladoiros. Any Lav or Mitzvah Sase, which is not Ladoiros, is not Nimna in the 613. That means that the Rambam counts it. Clearly, the Rambam holds it's Lailam. Plus, the Rambam says, Mishkoin Biyaretz Mitzrayim. <laughs> the Rambam couldn't be more black and white, that it's an eternal love. But Rabbeinu Bechaye, maybe other G'dayim held like Rabbeinu Bechaye, Rabbeinu Bechaye held that it was a temporary love, while these people who are heretics, who have corrupt character and beliefs, are there, don't go there. Once times change and maybe the civilization becomes more like other countries, then the same way you're allowed to live in North Korea, 
you are allowed to live in Egypt. Nobody's recommending moving to North Korea. That's not my personal recommendation, but it's not a love in the Torah. Fine. That's answer number two, I guess. Rabbeinu Bechaye. Answer number one is it's Asar. Answer number two is it's only a love in the Fine. Here's the question on Rabbeinu Bechaye. There's an amazing Gemara in Sukkah on Aleph Amid Beis. Rabbi Huda said, anyone who didn't see the government body of Alexandria of Egypt never saw the honor of the Jewish people. If you would go to the shul in Alexandria, there it fit twice as many seats as the Yotze Mitzrayim. Meaning the membership in the shul was 1.2 million. Okay? Step aside, you know, all the big uh, shuls, all the big pulpit synagogues, Alexandria of Egypt, 1.2 million members. Okay? The sisterhood alone was a few hundred thousand, okay? And, and the Chazal say that the seats of the Sanhedrin, they had like a government body. There were 81 thrones, 71, thank you, thrones of Sanhedrin, connected the Sanhedrin. And each throne was no less than 21 myriads of kikar of gold. So what's 21 myriads? Two myriads are what? 20,000. So 21 is... Um, 210,000 talents of, of gold. You know, that you could get a hefty price for each chair. It was a very uh, expensive and luxurious um, decor. And there was a chazan, and there was a bima, and it was so big that they couldn't hear the, um, the chazar's hashats, so they would have to wave flags, the well-known gemara, so that people, so people didn't actually hear the bracha, but they only knew when the bracha was being said. And the gemara concludes... Even bigger than the bells are shul. <laughs> now, I, today they're having 30 hours to raise $5 million for bells. So I can't tell you after today, but at least before today, you know, they're um, a bit, bit, yeah. And Amar Abaye, Vikulu Katlinu Alexandris Moikdan. Alexander killed them all out. So, by the way, the Achreinim uh, changed the Gersa. The, the Hagois Marav Runchberg says it can't be Alexander Moikdan who killed them out. Because the name of the city is Alexander, named after him, so it would have to have been um, somebody else, a different Alexander killed him out. But why were they punished? My time of Ionshu, Misham da Avriya Haikra, they violated the Pasuk, Loi Soi Sifun Losha Vadar Chaza Oid. We will never return on that road again, the Inhu Hadar Asu, and they returned. Wait a second. They were wiped out because they violated this love. Why were they? Well, first of all, I'll ask a question. It's only a love. You're not chayiv misa for violating it. But more than that, Rabbeinu Bechayi said it's only a mitzvah doyrois. So why were they wiped out? Clearly from the Gemara, this ain't no mitzvah doyrois. This is clearly a love that applies. What? This is not only a mitzvah, only ladoyrois, right? This, this mitzvah is clearly for all time. Otherwise, uh, why would the Gemara say that they were wiped out? Because they violated this love. Okay. So we try to move on to possibly another heter. And that is um, the answer of the Radvaz. The Radvaz is also busy. What did the Rambam rely on that the Rambam lived in Mitzrayim? So the Radvaz, in the end of number 10, the Radvaz wrote a parish on the Rambam. And the Radvaz writes, The Rambam didn't just settle Mitzrayim temporarily, but he stayed there. He had no alternative. Why? He was the king's doctor. He was the, the officer's doctor. He was the doctor of the emperor. And he couldn't escape. He had no choice. You know, perhaps his life was on the line. Certainly his parnasa. And the Makaimonos, uh, it's understandable. And said the Radvaz, what about me? I'm not a doctor, I'm just a rabbi. So what's my excuse, says Radvaz? Says Radvaz, Agamaninus yashavti shem zman meruba. I stayed there, Lilmoy Taira, to learn Taira, or Lamda, to teach Taira, and I started yeshiva there, and under those circumstances, it's mutter. So Rav Asher White points out that the Radvaz then is expanding the definition of Oynas. The Rambam, we understand, was a classic Oynas. You know, he, he was serving the king, his life was on the line. The Radvaz, he had a yeshiva. Shkoyach, there are no yeshivas in Eretz Yisrael? There are no yeshivas in Brooklyn? You know, there are places to go to learn. The Mitzrayim is not the only place in the world that you could learn. 
The pshat is, the pshat is, it's an extenuating circumstance. We're widening the definition and the parameters of, of extenuating circumstances. He felt that the learning would be better in Egypt, and therefore he, had, he felt he had no alternative. So we're expanding the definition of no alternative, and that is the third explanation. We move on. And we move on to the answer of the Hagois Maimonius. The Hagois Maimonius was the Talmud of the Marami Rotenberg. He was uh, killed al Kiddush Hashem at the time um, during the Crusades. There's a mayor Ben Rub Kusiel Hakoyen. And he brings down the Pshat of the Uraim. The Uraim says the same Pshat. And the Uraim's Pshat is as follows. Says Hagos Mamenius, ve'ein lanu tam lahatim loy nefarsh like the Reim. What does the Reim say? What does the Reim say? He says the Torah says loy soisifu leroisa oid. Look in the lashon of the pasuk. The pasuk says loy soisifu lashon vader chazer oid. It's only also to go to Mitzrayim if you lived in Israel. If you live in Eretz Yisrael, you can't leave Eretz Yisrael to go to Mitzrayim. But if you're living in Brooklyn, you're living in the Five, you're living in Williamsburg, Mali, Williamsburg, Mali, Egypt, what's the Nafkamina? One is better than the other. You're not to leave Eretz Yisrael, but there are Chazef. If you're living in Israel, you can't go to Egypt. But if you're not living in Eretz Yisrael, there's no problem uh, going to Egypt. That is the Pshad of the Hagois Maimonios, and he quotes the Uraim as well. Now, the Minchas Asher points out, yeah. So the Pasuk is saying, don't go back to Egypt. Why? Because I'm telling you, because I'm going to take you to Eretz Yisrael, and Badar Chazah, that's how, that's how they're learning it. Take you to Syria, take you to Spain. Well, they weren't going to Syria, right? They, they were going to Spain? Yeah, but the, the plan was, at least, <laughs> the plan was to go to Egypt. Avo Mishara Ratzai's Mutter. Mishara Ratzai's Mutter. So um, it's interesting that the <coughs> Minchasasar points out, does anybody know wh- from which country did the Rambam go to Egypt from? The Rambam didn't go to Egypt from Morocco. The, Ra- the Rambam went to Egypt from Eretz Yisrael. He went from the port of Akko. In the, uh, Hago- in the uh, Chida, the Chida writes, the Rambam came to Egypt from the port of Akko. So this answer is not going to work for the Rambam. Because the Rambam, in fact, came to Egypt from Eretz Yisrael. So this, was, this is going to be a problem for uh, the Hagois Maimonias. Okay, so now that leaves us with, we're up to answer number five. Answer number five, which is similar to answer number four, and this is what um, this Chashva gentleman said earlier, we're going to say even more specific. You know, in Parsha Samase, the Torah says all the stops that the Jews made when they were leaving Egypt. How many Masois did they make? 42 Masois. They made 42 Masois. From here to there, from here to Yamsuf, to Mara, back to Yamsuf. Why do we need to know all the stops that Bnei Yisrael made? The answer is the Isser of returning to Mitzrayim is only if you retrace your footsteps and take the exact same route that you left Egypt from, and you went from here, back to Yamsuf, back to Mara, back to Elim, and you take that exact circuitous route, then you can't take that route back to go to Egypt. Because that's a, a wondrous route. That was a, um, an Indian Nifla that you're able to travel through that route. But says, if you look at number 15, Rabbi Yosef Shalavi Natanzan in the Divrei Yosef, he says, Look at Rashi. Rashi says a reason for the Masais. But um, says Rabbi Yosef Shal, in my opinion, the, I'm, going to say, I'm going to say a new chiddush, that um, perhaps what the Torah means is, Rak oisai haderach shemei Eretz Yisrael l'Mitzrayim, are you now to go? So possibly it has to be that exact route. Now according to Rabbi Yosef Shalavi Natanzan, he basically would make the lav completely obsolete. I doubt anyone could possibly even figure out where these places are, let alone to take the same route back. I mean, 
yeah, I was thinking, if you look in Toysus and Erechen, Stam, it's Parshas B'Shalach, so it's Kedai to know. Most people think that Hash- we went through the Yamsuf. Never happened. We never went through the Yamsuf. We went in one end, we came back around the same end. If you look in Toysus and Erechen, there's a diagram. We went in and we, and we came right back on the same time. That's the Pshat. We said, um, Kali so were afraid, just like we're coming on one side, the Mitzrayim are also coming to get us. The Klai so thought Hashem was making a miracle of Kriyas Yamsev for the Mitzrim? No, the Mitzrim said we won't even go in the Yam, we'll just wait for them to come back on the same end that they came in on. So well, well, how would somebody possibly return to Mitzrayim? He's going to take a rowboat and go, you know, the same, it, it would be nearly impossible, but that is the pshat of the Divrei Yosef, that it's only us to take Mamish Badara Chaza. Answer number six. <laughs> This is an incredible answer <coughs> brought in the Sefer Yireim as well as, I believe, the Pri Chadash in the Sefer Mayim Chayim. He says, you know, if you look at number 18, we know that there are a lot of people that you're not allowed to marry. There, they are you know how to marry someone from Edom, from Moyav, from Amoin, and Mitzrayim. <coughs> but there's a klal, there's a klal, that Ba Sancherev Ubelbel Kal Ha'umois. <coughs> Sancherev came and he mixed up all the nations, right? So you think the guy is a Moyavi, he's really Saudi Arabian. You think this person is North Korean, he's really from Amoin. We don't know who's who, and therefore everybody is Bata. That's the klal. Ba Sancherev Ubelbel Kal Ha'umois, the Gemara says in Brachais, Yehudi Gera Amoini came and they mattered him, Lavoi Bekahal, because Basan Cherbil will call us. Mamelo Mitzrayim is not Mitzrayim today. The Torah says don't go back to Mitzrayim when Mitzrayim is Mitzrayim. But they're not Egypt. They're not Egyptians there. You know who lives in Egypt today? The Native Americans, the Eskimos are in Egypt today. And therefore, since Bach Sancherev, Ubilba Kala Umais, therefore it's permitted to return there, says the Yereim. The, the Smag, however, um, has a, a number of questions on this, psa, on this pshat. Number one, he asks that even though Basan Cherev Ubilbal Kala Umais, we paskin like Rabbi Yeshua, that even though San Cherev was Mavabal Kala Umais, but after 40 years he returned the Mitzrayim to Mitzrayim. That's how we paskin, like the sheet of Rabbi Yeshua. So Basan Cherev Ubilbal Kala Umais does. Um, well, would not apply to Egypt. The Haraya! Look in the Gemara and Sukkah! Look in the Gemara and Bracha! The Gemara and Sukkah says that Alexandria was destroyed because they returned, they returned to Egypt. What do you mean they returned to Egypt? This is after Sancherev came. Clearly, this is not going to be a heter, otherwise Alexandria would not have been destroyed. Clearly, if Alexandria was destroyed, then there's no heter of Ba Sancherev, Ubilbel, Kal, Haumais. And therefore, we continue on our journey here to try to figure out what heter there is for um, the Rambam and other G'daylam to have lived in, in Egypt. Another heter of the Shalom Eshev. Look at number 20. Says, Rav Yosef Shalom Levi Anatan Zan in the Shalom Eshev, Shalom Eshev, Chelek Bez, Chelek Ravi Simen Kovzayin. He says it could be the Isra of returning to Mitzrayim is al klalos ha'am. Don't return to Egypt in mass. The nation can return. Doesn't the Pasuk say, Vayar el ha'am. lachem. You can't go as a nation. You want to go as a private citizen? You want to go as a rabbi? You want to go as a shaykhet? As a chazan? As a... Pizza guy, whatever you want to do, you could go. It's just you can't go as an am. But you're allowed to go as a yachid. I would ask on Rabbi Yosef Shal, the Lashon of the Rambam is, The Rambam says a Lashon, you can't go there as yachidim. In, in number 6, in Parakeh Halacha Ches, the Rambam says you can't go there as yachidim. But it could be what the Rambam means is an Am 
Because the Rambam is saying that if Bezdin is Kaivishet, in the Melech is Kaivishet, you're allowed to return, it's just you're not allowed to go without the Melech. So maybe all the Rambam means is Yechidim still means as an Am, it just means without the Melech. Okay, be it as it may, let us progress. The Radvaz himself says, another Heter, that why are you allowed to go to Mitzrayim today? Why are you allowed to live there? Because wherever a Jew goes, he's never settling there. You ask somebody, where do they live? Where do I live? You mean, you mean today? Where do you live? I don't know, I'm, uh, we'll see, we'll see how the market is, we'll see where real estate is. Everybody's always selling their house. From, after buying a house, at least two years later, you're, you're in the market to sell, obviously, if you find the right buyer. Some people, they continue to hang on to it for 50, 60, 70 years, but they're always together selling their house. So the Ravaz says, we don't go to Egypt to stay there. Elo Lagur! And the Chashotim Zudeinu Nechaz Yisrael! Nobody lives in Kugarn Hills. We're only here until we find the right place in Eretz Yisrael. Right? Nobody lives in, in New York. There no, how many Jews live in New York? Eh, only a few. You could count them on a handful. Everybody else lives in Eretz Yisrael, basically. Right? So we never live anywhere. We're never Mishtakea anywhere. We, uh, we only lagor ba'aretz. Answer number nine. This is an incredible answer of the Ritva. First the Ritva brings the answer of the Smag and the Prichadash. Basan Cherva Bilbo Kala Umais. Then he brings an answer of Rev Lezer Mimitz. Only from Eretz Yisrael. Listen to what he says. V'hanochoin yoiser. You know when you're now to live in Mitzrayim? If we control Eretz Yisrael... And we're living in Eretz Yisrael, then Hashem says, you know, Mitzrayim is not really a good alternative. You want to go to America? That's a halbat Sarah. But don't go to, don't go to Egypt. She'enu Yisrael hu elu bezman she Yisrael shru yin alad mosam. Avu bezman hazeh, she'nigzor alin elias nidach in the whole katsi arts. But nowadays, that there's a decree on us that we have to be spread out to the whole world. Kol chutz aretz echad hu. There's no nafkamina between New York and Egypt. If Eretz Yisrael is available, you can't live in Egypt. But of course today, where we have to be in the Golos, then there's no difference between Egypt and the rest of the world. Comes the Tzitz Eliezer, and Chelek Yedal, at Simen Pei Zayin, and he says, L'chayro though, B'zman hazeh, that Baruch Hashem Eretz Yisrael is Tachas Yadeinu. We have to be very choshesh for the love of living in Mitzrayim. Because before, maybe for the last 2,000 years, when Eretz Yisrael was not a realistic possibility, so then, you know, there's a valid heter to live in Mitzrayim. We can't live in Eretz Yisrael. We could use the heter or the ritva of all of Chutz Eretz is the same. Look at number 31. And it's Tzitzel Yezer, Chelek Yedal, Tzimen Pei Zayin, Ois Zayin, Ula Fiha Amor, all the way at the end of the piece. Kahayoyim Hazash, Eretz Yisrael, Baruch Hashem Tachas Yadeinu, Beli oil zarim, v'chol nidche yisrael l'tfutsois of nekram, l'avei elel t'yashiba. Every Jew has the opportunity to go back. On the other hand, Egypt is not the most viable place to raise a from family. You know, you don't have uh, good day schools there. You don't have kosher bakeries and pizza stores. How are you supposed to raise your family there in Egypt? So therefore, and uh, they don't have infrastructure. You have to be choshesh for the lav today of living in Egypt. And Taka today, I don't think there are too many G'daylam who live in Egypt. Maybe, uh, you know, Rabbi Vadya lived there when, uh, when living in Eretz Yisrael wasn't feasible at that time. In, in a, he didn't have a Parnassah there. It wasn't possible to live in Eretz Yisrael back in the day. Now, says uh, Tzitzel Yezer, we have to be really choshesh, uh, more seriously for the lav of living in Egypt. So the Tzitzel Yezer seems to be very much uh, we're going in the Mahalach of the Ritva, that the real heter is that we can't live, we, the reason we can't live in Egypt is when Eretz Yisrael is available. In the times of the Rambam, Eretz Yisrael perhaps was not a, a real possibility. For other G'daylam, it was not a real possibility. When it is a real possibility, Egypt is not recommended. Okay, that is reason number nine. And finally, for those of you who want a Kabbalistic spin of things, reason number ten is brought in the Chida. 
Now, by the way, I just want to speak out a very interesting marsha. With all these heterim, you know, especially with the heter, possibly that it's only ledoiros, and according to the heter, it's only there, there's a very interesting Yushalmi that the Marshan Sukkah quotes in Nunal from Abayz, that the Yushalmi says that when uh, Yirmiya told the Jews not to go back to Egypt and the Kali Yisrael made a shvua, they would listen to Yirmiya Hanavi. And therefore, if you look at the Marshal, if you look at number 24, when they did return to Egypt, they weren't violating possibly the law of, of not living in Egypt. They were violating their personal oath that they took to Yirmiya Hanavi that they would not return to Egypt. The Marshal says, uh, five lines from the end, V'inyonoi mashenenshu Kalkach, meaning if it's only a lav, right? If living in Egypt is only a lav, then why was the community in Alexandria wiped out? Maybe they should get Malchus, but to be killed out, that's very harsh. The inyanoi mashenen shu kalkach, memne averazu, lefimash mefurish besefer yermia, shabikshu sheiris hagoila, mi yermia, lahoyrois lahem hadarach, mi pi hashem. The remnant of the Golos asked from Yirmiya to show them the road. Im Yashuvah Mitzrayim. Meaning, the Golos, the people of the Golos, asked Yirmiya, Nu, what should we do? Im Yashuv Mitzrayim. But when the first base of English was being destroyed, they asked Yirmiya, where should we go? Should we go to Babel? Should we go to Egypt? And Yirmiya said, don't go to Egypt. Vekiblu aleim b'shvua l'kayim nevuasai. They accepted with an oath to fulfill the nevuah of Yirmiya, not to return to, to, to um, Egypt. And then Yirmiya says, if you go back, you're going to die. And they were Makabalet. So it's not Enes Echal Esser. There was no, the original Esser was off. Maybe it was only Ledoiros, or maybe there are other Heterim for that Esser. But they were Makabel to listen to this Nevua. Now it could be then, that only applied to the people who went back after Yirmiya told them not to. But if somebody were to go today, maybe that nevuah is not in effect. That nevuah was said to, to that time. Okay. Finally, the Kabbalistic reason. A very interesting idea. Um, something that some Sofer talks about at length, and all this farms speak about, that why, why, did we, why were we commanded not to go back to Egypt? So there's this interesting phenomenon in Jewish history, that here we could be in a country for hundreds of years, and we could rise to the summit of success, and then in one, overnight, we're out of there so fast and we, we, never, you know, we have nothing doing there anymore. You know, every country. Uh, all of a sudden, Spain, one day, that's it, we're out of You know, we, we reach the crescendo of uh, success and then one night, we're out of there. So there's a concept that the reason for the Golos is that from the time of the Chet of uh, the Eitz Hadas, sparks of Kedusha got scattered all over the world and our job is to sort of speak, collect these Nitzayt shell Kedusha and once we've collected the sparks, we have no business there anymore, we've done our job and we don't need to go back there. And that's what happened uh, in Mitzrayim. We collected all the sparks, the Pasuk says, Venit Saltem es Mitzrayim, Rashi says like a, fi- a pond that every fish has been taken out. So therefore Hashem said, don't go back to Egypt, you have no business there, there anymore, you've collected everything. But the Chida writes in the, in, in the Sefer Dvash Lafi that once Jews went back, after Yirmiya told them not to, so there were no more sparks, but after Jews went back there, they, they left more sparks there. So once they brought more sparks there, we could go back to gut them. Get them. The marshal is, you have a messy garage. So you tell the kids, clean up the garage, then we're locking it up and no one's ever going there again because I never want to clean it up. So you send the kids in and um, they clean up the garage. The only thing is they go in with chocolate and a mess and, uh, and they, they mess it up again. They clean up the old mess, they make a new mess. So now they can't go back in, they have to go back in to clean up the new mess. <laughs> so the same thing happened in Egypt. Once, once we left in time, we really weren't allowed to go back. But once people went back, then you, you need to go back to collect whatever was, uh, so to speak, messed up again. That's the Kabbalistic angle of it. Okay, Rabbi, so we're just getting started. <laughs> Not real, no, but there's another segment to the share. By the way, how did the Rambam ever end up in Egypt in the first place? So we have an interesting sefer here, Divrei Yosef by Rabbi Yosef Sambari. And he writes, how did the Rambam ever get to Egypt in the first place? It happened was, one time on the Yom Tov of Sukkot in Yushalayim, or in Eretz Yisrael, 
uh, the Rambam left the shul to go home, and he's holding his uh, lulav, keminag chasidim. Okay. And the Rambam, so to speak, he's like holding his lulav in the street. And the king or the ambassador of Cordova happened to be there. What he was doing there, I can't tell you. And he started mocking the Rambam. He said to the Rambam, what are you doing? You're acting like a Meshugana. You're shaking your Luv and Esrig. You're shaping your, your palm branches. What, what, what's with you? you? You lost your marbles. So the Rambam said, no, this is not a, mig- a Minog of Meshugam. The Minog of Meshugam, I'm not, at least I'm not throwing stones. Uh-oh. Because uh, they, they took that as like the Rambam was uh, mocking the practice of the Ishmaelim, who... Uh, they, 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 they throw stones. So the Rambam said, at least I'm not stoning anyone. So basically they were moist around the Rambam, and the Rambam had to leave Israel and go to Egypt. That's, that's how the story goes. Be it as it may, we have the report of Rav Ashturi HaParchi, that the Rambam signed his name, Moshe ben Maimon, Ha'ever b'chol yoyim, Gimel Lavin. Comes of Ruven Margolius, in his magnum opus, in the Sefer Margolius Ayam, and he says, despite the fact that the Kavta of Farach testifies that he heard from the grandson of the Ram, the Ramam signs his name this way, I do not believe it. He says, I do not accept this report. I've never seen a letter where the Rambam signs his name this way. I never saw a tshuva where the Rambam signs his name this way. And I, the Rambam writes, I, I violated three lavin every day. It's not even true. You're not over three lavin. Does the Rambam say you're over three lavin? The Rambam says it's lav mem vav. It's one lav that appears three times in the Torah. So why would the Rambam exaggerate that I'm over every day three lavin? It's not three separate lavin. It's one lav. It's barchenu barbracha hamshuleshes kama batoira aksuva ide moishavdecha. You don't say barchenu barbracha hamshuleshes batoira. The, it doesn't appear three times in the Torah. It's Babracha Mshulashes. It's a three parted bracha. Where is it? I, the Sidurim, put the Kama in the wrong place. It's not the only mistake that they have, okay? So, it's Barachinu Babracha Hamshulashes. Take a breather, pause. So, too, um, it's not three lavin, it's one lav that appears three times. And it's very strange, says Rabbi Margolis, Umuzar Shrabinu Agado Yavoy La Afushe Lavi. Why in the Rambam why would the Rambam exaggerate his sin wrongful, wrongly? And therefore this is what we call Eidos Shabbatla Mikzasa. And we leave the, the rest up to your imagination. <laughs> it's Eidos Shabbatla Mikzasa, says Rabbi Margolis, who by the way had the biggest collection of Gedolim pictures in the world except for his own picture. He was a very interesting uh, personality. He writes, he does not believe this report of Rav... Yes, Rav Ashura Parchi probably was told this by the Rambam's grandson. But do I believe that the Rambam signed his name this way? No. Says Rav Ungarwitz, no. Rav Yaakov Emden wrote footnotes on the Kaftar of Afarach. And he says, I do not believe that the Rambam would sign his name this and write this. What, for what purpose, why would the Rambam advertise his sins? You know, people are in the advertising business, but of what benefit is it to advertise your sins? Imagine the Rambam said, Hey, everyone, I live in Egypt. I buy three laven every day, and I never got hit by lightning, so come, come, to Egypt, come join me. If you're not going to move to Rochester or Norfolk, Virginia, you know, they're advertising these communities. Come to Egypt. Why would the Rambam be soliciting, advertising his Averos? He's, giving, he's being machti other people. This is Yaakov Emden. I do not believe the Rambam signed his name this way. <coughs> Other Gedolim do believe the Rambam signed his name this way. There are Hagois on the Sefer Kaft of Farach that uh, from the Ratzach Chein Tov that we know the Gemara says that um, somebody violates a, a well-known sin. There's a concept of V'chatosi Negdi Tamid that it's Mechaper one's Averos not to hide their sin. Likewise, the Tzitz Eliezer writes in a tshuva, he does believe the Rambam signed his name this way. He says that uh, the reasoning of the Rambam is maybe he had a heter. He had, we, we learned today, many heterim, nine heterim. The Rambam probably had a good heter. But because the Rambam never wanted to forget about Chor ben Yushalayim, and that inherently, without a heter, it is a to leave in Egypt, so, so he should always be cognizant of this. 
and he shouldn't just dismiss it and make believe as if there's nothing to reckon with, and that living in Egypt is something to think about, the Raman would sign his name, not that he's violating and he's mamish over in Avera, but perhaps the Raman was reminding himself that uh, there is something to think about. On the other hand, the Pardas Yosef in Parsha Shoftim writes, he does not believe that the Rambam would sign his name this way. He says, Gam, number 32, Rebel Yo Yisrael, in the letters of Rebel Yo Yisrael, the rabbi of Cairo, to Rav Yaakov Safir, he writes very strongly that he's confident the Rambam did not sign his name this way. So we have a very interesting machlekes. We have a, a, a few opinions about whether the Rambam, in fact, um, did sign his name, who violates every day three lavin. Some suggest, some say in fact he did, some say he didn't. So now I'm going to tell you uh, my two cents on the issue, whether the Rambam in fact did sign his name this way. After all, the Kafter of Aferach reports that he heard from the uh, son of the Rambam that the Rambam signed his name this way. Okay, so... Uh, that's the issue. Did the Rambam, in fact, uh, sign his name? There's an incredible Kesef Mishnah. Kesef Mishnah is in Hilchas Tefillin. We know there's a machlekes. <laughs> there's a machlekes between Rashi and Rabbi Tam as the proper way for the parshios of Tefillin to be. Rashi learns um, Kesidron. Rabbi Tam learns Havayos Be'emsa. So what do we do, Lamaisa? How do we paskin? Paskin like Rashi. Paskin like Rashi. The halacha is like Rashi. <coughs> but, the halacha is like, uh, halacha is like Rashi that um, we do it kisidran. Fine. The shaila is what was done in Jewish history? What was the practice? What did people used to do? So the Kesav Mishnah writes, number 33, This is a tshuva the Rambam. Besidur ha in the arrangement of the parashiyos. The klaf, shehu ha Okay, he's writing, this is the Rambam actually writing, that this is what my tefillin looked like. This is the Rambam talking. That there was a cipher. The Rambam's talking, and he's saying that a soifer by the name of Moshe Bar Maimon of Kartova tricked me. And he tricked all the people before me. Meaning the Rambam says that we were duped. Who were we duped by? Rav Moshe Bar Maimon of Kartova. Now what was the Rambam's name? Moshe Bar Maimon of Kartova. And what's the soifer's name? Moshe Bar Maimon from Kortova. The Gam HaRab Yitzchak, Zechreiner Levracha, Kavasei Svirle. Even Rab Yitzchak um, held like him. Betshuva. The Gam Chacham Echad Yesh, Shmoy Rav Yaakov Keli, Kacha Asa. The Harbei Goinim Chok, Wal Davraza. The Chol Anshe Mizrach, the Chol Anshe Eretz Tzvi, Hakan Moinim Chok, Wal Davraza. The Amru, Ki Hachachomim, Hanemonim, Paschot Fulan Shabbeinu Hai. Meaning, the Rambam says we were duped originally. We all thought that Allah was like Rabbeinu Tam because there was a cipher by the name of Moshe ben Maimur Kordova who said that Allah was like Rabbeinu Tam. Until we opened up the tefillin of Haigain and we saw if Haigain was wearing Rashi tefillin and I changed and I passed him like Rashi. For Rav Moshe Deri, when he came from the West to Eretz Yisrael, he was, his tefillin was like the Anshe Mekoimchem and when he uh, showed the tefillin, to, he showed divrei hagoinim hakadmoinim varay shalom hishlech tefillov. He threw his tefillin in the garbage. When he realized Rabbi Natan was not correct, he threw his tefillin out. This is a very famous story. How people mistakenly used to wear Rabbi Natan's tefillin until they realized that the halacha was like Rashi. But where did the whole misconception come from? A cipher by the name of Moshe ben Maimon from Kartova who happened to have the same name as the Rambam. So how many Rambams were there? There were at least two Rambams, but as we're about to see, there are more than two Rambams. What do I mean? Look in the Chida. The Chida brings down, in number 35, 
Shamati mipi hamarubin shabir fez. I heard from a lot of people in fez. Hayuroitzim hayishmeilim lisroiv chas v'sham harambam. The Arabs wanted to burn the Rambam. Amaisa shahoya shadon din shamimenu hoya bizoy lahem. And he was saved. The Rambam saved himself through shvuos and shemois hakodesh. Does this sound like the Rambam to you? Does this sound like the rationalistic Rambam that they wanted to burn him and he used shemois to save himself? And I heard says the Chida mipi adam gadol rav muvak, and that this happened in the year kaf tzadichas. So obviously this wasn't the Rambam. Because if it happened in 1438, it was much later than the Rambam. The answer is the Balhanisim of the Ra- of, of this story was the Rambam of Fez. The Kachra b'Sfarim Ksav Yeshan Lazim. It's a Rambam of Fasi. There was a Rambam of Fez, and the Rambam of who wrote the Yad Chazaka is the Rambam of Spain. Ah, you'll ask, what are you talking about? There are two Rambams. There's a Rambam of Fez and a Rambam of Spain. There's, there are much more than two Rambams. Because even in the time of the Rambam of Spain, there were two Rambams, like the Kesav Mishnah asks. So if you have a Shaila, did the Rambam sign his name that way? It could be the Rambam did sign his name that way. But you have to know which Rambam which it was. Rambam? You know, there were at least three Rambams. Now, usually, you know, in Brisk, they say when you have a steer in the Rambams, there are two Dinim. But they're not going to say there are two Rambams, because we know <laughs> all the Yana Chazaka is the Rambam. And he wrote the Marnavuchim, and he wrote... The Chuba Saramam, but now we're talking about some kind of document that we don't have access to. We don't quite know which Ramam that was. Let's just end off with uh, two Chsam Soifers. Chsam Soifer and Pasha Shoiftim um, says the Isser is to stay in Mitzrayim, but to do business is Motor. And Laniyas Daiti, it's a mitzvah to tour Egypt. What's the mitzvah? To see the Makoimois that Nisim happened for. So, so Taka, if you're thinking of going to Mitzrayim <laughs> for Pesach, it's a very worthwhile place to go to. Says the Chsam Soifer and the Jewish Magad Sam Soifer, La Asid Lavoi, we will be Koivesh Mitzrayim and it will be Mekudash, and then La Asid Lavoi will Taka be a mitzvah to live in Mitzrayim. Rabbi Say, have a great day. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.